Hey guys, here's Heiko. My channel supporter, Artur Gutzke, he just shared with me how to disassemble a leaf twig or a leaf thorn. Uh, my leaf twig, which I have had in use for a few months now, starts to squeak. And um, I really wanted to take this thing apart to be able to clean it out and to maybe lubricate a little bit. I have uh, Razor Emporium's own um, razor oil. And uh, so uh, Artur shared with me how to do this. So you open up your leaf twig all the way. I haven't tried it yet, so this is first attempt here. And then you take yourself a paper clip and bend it all out of shape into kind of a U. So you have two parallel ends here, more or less parallel. And then if you look into the bottom here, so once you open this all the way up, look into the bottom, you see those two little holes there. And if you manage to get your paper clip stuck into those two openings, so I don't even know. I can see it on camera better than with my bare eye. So um, the ends have to be kind of the same length. So you can insert them into the two holes at the same time. Let's see if we can make this happen. Like that. And then supposedly, once you accomplish that, uh, which we I think we did, then you turn the thing Uh, okay, let's look at Artur's email one more time. So he, he sent me some pictures even. So here is what that looks like. Let's go back to the text here. All right. Komplett zerlegt werden. Uh-huh. Man öffnet den Rasierer durch Drehen des Knopfes, bringt den Deckel in die obere. Ja, yeah, so you open it all the way. You find me good. Löcher. Und dreht die Büroklammer zusammen mit dem Knopf gegen den Uhrzeigersinn. So a counterclockwise. So you. Counterclockwise. Außengewinde. Okay. So you open this thing up all the way. Now this is closing it. This is opening all the way. Then you push in those the pins that we just created, and then it will you, you actually feel it slip in further because the, the nut that we're trying to remove there on the inside has two slots that he is showing in the picture here. So like like those two here, let's get a pointer. Those two little slots. That's where you need to get the pins from your uh, paper clip. And then you are supposed to... So once you have this engaged counterclockwise, and that will take the knob and that nut on... Oh, here we go. It's coming apart. All right. Um, keep uh, turning... Arthur, you are my hero. Arthur, du bist mein Held. Um, and then, not sure, I guess, the opposite direction. So now we have it all apart. Here we go. Yeah, so the, the thread here actually on this top piece, on this here, is a left-hand thread. That's why here on tightening up the blade, it's, it's righty-loosey, lefty-tidy. Okay, so let's see. This will come out? Maybe not. I guess you have the two little Torx screws up here that hold this part on. I'm assuming if you would take this off, the whole thing comes out. But at least we're, we're already much closer to having this apart than I've ever been before. But um, he has it. He has it much further apart than I have it here. Let's take a peek at this. Oh, I see. There is a little uh, a clip on here. Right in here is a little circlip that has to come out. 
Oh, it even looks like it's a little on the rusty side here. So I, I'm just using a watchmaker's little micro flathead screwdriver. So we just need to get it started to come out of the groove and then you can just slowly, gently. There's already lots of soap residue on here. Um, it's tough when you, I mean, a typical normal three piece razor is probably the most optimal design when it comes to cleanliness. So if you wanna, wanna keep your razors clean, they are the easiest to take apart and get really in all the nooks and crannies. Whereas a de design like this here, very proprietary, probably not meant to be taken apart by the end user. But, uh, all right, here we go. So here's this little sewer clip that, no, oop, don't lose it, and there you go. And there. You know what, uh, since we're now so far into it, let's uh, get some Torx bits and take this all apart. Here, let me pause. I had to dig really deep. Uh, Torx, even though it's very common in you know automotive and all kinds of industrial application, in watch repair, Torx isn't that common yet, I guess. So I don't really have a good set of very tiny little Torx drivers, but I, I have this, this old kit here back from Germany with all those safety bits that can take electronics apart that are not meant to be taken apart. And I got lucky that the smallest Torx bit in it actually fits the, the little screws here. They are stainless steel, I'm assuming at least, and we don't wanna booger those up because then my, my twig is gonna be out of commission. And I really like this little razor. You know, some people don't like it because it's a different angle. It's different from a normal DE safety razor, but uh, it is really mild, but efficient so you can get a really smooth shaving result out of it without destroying your face. And um, you know, it still uses regular DE blades, even though just half of it. So here we go. Here's uh, the close comb, so to speak, the bottom part of your razor head with the magnet and the two little screws. Let's just keep it all together, put it over to the side here. And uh, I don't know, I can, oh, see, now there is a little Phillips head screw that can take the top part out and then the bottom part comes out. <clears throat> and I can tell based on blue here, there is a little bit of some Loctite on things to hold it together. I don't know if you guys can hear my autofocus on my camera here, but honestly, it bugs me. I have a Canon DSLR camera that has a 18 through 250 millimeter lens on it made by Sigma. And it's great because it has this long uh, zoom range. Oh, uh, here we go. But um, it's really noisy. The autofocus motor in there is just clickety clacking around all the time. And unfortunately, when I do those desktop repairs here, uh, some of that noise gets recorded on my microphone here. Yeah, there's definitely Loctite on it. All right, so now, there you go. Here we go, top off. And now this should come out at the bottom. And look how disgust, I wonder, look at this here. This almost looks like a little um, spring-loaded, what's this? I, I really wonder, is this there to center the whole thing in here? Oh, I see what it is. I see, hold on. So when you're tightening this up here, even though left-hand thread, so righty-loosey, lefty-tighty, so you go counterclockwise and you're tightening this up, this little thing here writes in a internal, kind of like a thread, and um, that makes the 
Is it? Is that what I'm what I'm seeing here? So when when it gets pulled down, it rotates the thing. That's why the head in its full open position sits like this, and as it gets pulled in, it turns. That is pretty good. I wonder how they machined that. In here is this uh it's kind of like a spiral. I'm assuming and that spiral causes the head to do, do this 90 degree turn when it gets pulled down. So it goes from here to there. That's pretty cool. So now we have it all apart and that's how you take a twig or a thorn apart. Don't lose those little screws. And I will definitely after cleaning put a little bit Loctite on it. Maybe this one, this is low strength or medium strength is the blue stuff. I also have that in the garage. So uh, yeah, but it, it gets pretty cruddy pretty quickly and it's lots of little moving parts. Look at this. I mean, this razor has only been in use for two months maybe. So this is already pretty cruddy. Just brush it off, soap and uh, like a dish soap and some toothbrush and then just slap it back together. That's what I'm going to do. I think I just noticed the magnet is even held in by the screws. So when you take those two little torque screws out, the magnet comes loose too. It's like a little, oh yeah, it's a, it's a tiny little metal bent piece and then a tiny little rare earth magnet. Oh, here we go. Here's the magnet by itself. <laughs> now we started something. <laughs> now I did something. Great. How are we going to get it back in there? There you go. Okay, no. <laughs> Let's not take, about, uh, take apart everything here, Heiko. You could probably put a dab of little, you know, super glue in there to keep the magnet in place, especially during the assembly process. So that's that. Artur, you're my hero. Thanks, Artur, for sharing this. And of course, I had to go ahead and make a video out of it immediately, you know. But uh, this is pretty exciting. I really like the razor. I want to keep it in, in proper working order. I'm only going to clean the bigger parts. I'm not going to take the little screws and that little bridge to the sink because I know my luck. I will probably drop it right down the drain. Um, but yeah, that's good. All right, that's it, guys. I guess I will have to make this a little bit more comprehensive video. Now I showed you how to disassemble this. Um, I just decided, yeah, this is for watchmaking. It's like a little little uh, a screen container where you can take, uh, where are my tweezers? Here we go. Set of tweezers, drop all the tiny little bits and pieces into like this little uh, clip ring here, sir clip maybe even this nut, the little uh, Phillips head screw, and just drop it all in there. Uh, maybe the magnet, if we can get the magnet out. Here's the magnet. And just drop that in there. Oof. <laughs> okay, there we go. My fingers are not magnetic. And then I can now brush clean the bigger parts and the small bits and pieces here, they will just go into the ultrasonic cleaner. I know that a lot of you guys don't have an ultrasonic cleaner. Um, but, you know, honestly, if you're a little bit DIY minded, an ultrasonic cleaner, even a cheap one from Amazon for like 20 bucks or so for jewelry, watch bands, you would be surprised if you take a... Uh, watch that you have had for 10 years and you take the uh, the strap off, not the rubber strap, but like a bracelet type, like a metal bracelet and put it in an ultrasonic cleaner with just some warm water and some uh, dish detergent, uh, how much grime and dirt comes out of it. So really having a cheapo little Amazon, I put a link down below uh, ultrasonic cleaner to do stuff like this here, little screws and whatnot that I, I don't want to, brush those in the sink just because of fear I would lose stuff. But the ultrasonic cleaner at least gets a little bit of the grime and dirt off. The bigger parts, I'm just going to go to the sink, brush off with a toothbrush uh, and some dish soap. And then we're going to gather here again and reassemble it together. Okay. 
So here again, once again, my little ultrasonic cleaner. Here are all the little pieces, including the magnet. I don't know if ultrasonic vibrations can demagnetize a magnet. If any one of you knows that, let me know down in the description. I'm not sure. I guess we will find out. Um, I'm already preheating it. Temperature is going to go up to 45 degrees Celsius. I have set it to five minutes. I'll just leave it in there. I'll start it up once the temperature is getting close to 45. And then only five minutes of cleaning. Um, that should take care of grime and uh, will also help the new Loctite to actually lock in those little screws. So I'm already done brushing all the bits and pieces and I decided to throw them in with the little pieces here into my ultrasonic cleaner. And now we're just gonna cook it for five minutes. Here we go. So everything is fresh out of the ultrasonic cleaner here. It's IPA. Uh, the parts are all still wet. No big deal. Don't tell my wife I'm using a dish towel. <laughs> To uh, just dry them off, you know, no big deal. There is a little bit of dish detergent um, in the water that is in my ultrasonic cleaner, and you can oh, you can see how shiny they have all gotten, you know, like actually really nice. What you can also see here, they are not plated all the way around. So this is a zinc alloy cast part. And this will eventually corrode and then probably the cast, uh, the, the plating will flake off. I think it's going to be unavoidable. Yeah, let's just get rid of some of the water. I just wanted to show you another trick how to dry parts pretty quickly. If you don't have an air compressor or let's say you have really, oh, by the way, I put gloves on as I was scrubbing parts in the sink. Now you don't have to look at my ugly dry skin fingers no more. So now we're taking this all out. It's held together by the magnet, which is pretty nice. So at least things are not getting lost. And that's proof that the neodymium magnet that they used um, is still magnetized. There we go. So the little torque screws. Here's the magnet. Let's just not drop stuff. Um, if you have IPA, IPA is isopropyl alcohol. And as you know, in the store, you can buy that as 70%, 91%, 99%. This is actually mixing with water. So if you have like a solvent like gasoline or mineral spirits, they will not mix with water and water and uh, those solvents will always separate. But if you have isopropyl alcohol, that will actually mix with water. And so if you have wet parts, you can just dip them into isopropyl alcohol and then put them on here. This is watchmaker's paper or you can put it on, you know, paper towel from the kitchen and let them evaporate. And then after that, there's no water on it anymore. It's going to be dry. So that's all I'm doing right now. Washing off the, the dish soap, so to speak, and mixing, diluting the water with the isopropyl alcohol, and then just let it evaporate. And that's it. Dries much faster. You don't have to wait like an hour until your parts are dry. You don't have to blow them off with compressed air also takes a little bit of leftover oils or greases off. And then uh, we're going to do the same here with those big pieces here. I don't know. Remember, that's, that's the threaded part that goes on this left-hand thread here. And uh, this doesn't really need to be uh, uh, dry or degreased because we're going to put some oil on it anyways. But uh, this one here doesn't need to have that either I don't think but we're doing it anyways this doesn't really either maybe oh I remember one part up here is a little hole for the a flat uh, Phillips head screw that should be degreased because we're gonna put Loctite on that little screw so and then in here this cast part are also two threads that I would like to you know, hold onto things. 
and be degreased. So let's just dip it into isopropyl. And now we're just going to let it sit here a little bit and evaporate. And I'll be back when it's evaporated. All right, so it looks like most everything is dried up. Let's uh, do some prep work. So I have this huge container of dirty container of blue Loctite. We're just going to put a little drop on my work surface here. It doesn't dry off really fast. Um, and then we have a little bottle here. This is mineral oil from a pair of clippers that I have. That stuff is non-toxic. You can put that on your skin. It's specifically made for this kind of application. So we're putting a little drop of that on there as well, as you can see, and then put the rest out of the way. And now we're going to try to assemble this in some sort of organized fashion. So I think what we're going to start doing is put a little drop of oil on this one here. And to get oil on there, uh, small amounts. If you have some watch repair uh, tools, you can use oilers. Those are just little tools that have a tiny little tip that allow you to deposit minute amounts of oil or here in our case oil and eventually Loctite. So I have a few different sets. Uh, make sure this is clean so you don't want to mix up oils or um, contaminate your Loctite. So you have a clean tip. I just wiped it off with some isopropyl. Um, we're going to put a little bit of oil on here on this on this, it's almost like a miniature, it's a bearing. It's a little, I, I think I can see little ball bearings in there or like a little roller bearing. Yeah. See that? Tiny little bearing. And we're gonna put a little bit of some oil on there. You can use a toothpick to do the same thing. We're just going to get some oil in there. Who knows how long it's going to be in there. If we use this in a sink and shaving or use it in a shower. But and I'm, I'm putting on quite a bit here. This is probably the part that was squeaking. I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe. All right. So now, now we're going to put this away. We're going to grab a second one or a second toothpick, one for the oil, one for the Loctite. We don't want to mix that because Loctite doesn't stick to greasy surfaces or oily surfaces. So here the green one is going to be for a Loctite. Um, so now we're going to shove this in there. This here goes in here somehow. It should. There you go. And then uh, this little bearing falls into a groove and does this 90 degree rotation, as you can see here. Right? Yeah. Okay. So we need to first put this puppy on there. And uh, it has a flat surface on one side, so I'm assuming it will only go on there in one orientation. All right, so here is um, the screw hole. Now we're going to grab. Sometimes you need three hands. Um, the magnet and the little Phillips head screw, they are permanently attached to each other. There you go. I think we're just going to dip the Phillips head screw into my little puddle of Loctite and then just insert it here and then grab my little screwdriver man my camera makes a lot of readily noises but i don't know if it makes it into the footage if so i apologize and i will work on uh, improving that so screw is in 
Now I'm just gonna tighten it up. Just don't do a 190 pound gorilla. This is a tiny little screw going into what looks like maybe a brass piece. So you don't wanna strip that out. And then once we have that on, now we can work on getting this piece back in place. And uh, this is now gonna be a little bit more complicated. So I think what I'm gonna to try to do is Make sure the magnet is relatively clean. Uh, oh, it jumped right, right where it's supposed to go. I'm just wondering if there is maybe, you know, magnet has a two, two sides to it. One side opposes metal, the other one attracts metal. But this is fine. So my screwdriver is attracted to it. So I'm assuming that my razor blade will be drawn to it as well. And then we're gonna grab that's what you need tweezers for. I mean, grabbing those tiny little screws with your bare hand is probably difficult, but grabbing it with gloved hands, absolutely impossible. So we're just prepping this little bridge here with the two uh, Torx screws. This is for Loctite, right? The green handle oiler or your one special toothpick and we're just going to put a little bit of Loctite or Threat Locker. It doesn't need to be Loctite brand. It can be anything else too. And just put a little bit on the thread there. So and now I'm going to try to insert the screws and the little bridge onto the magnet without dropping it all like this. And now we can move some other stuff out of the way. Now we're gonna try to drop that on here and then at least get one of the two torque screws started. Oh yeah, here we go, success. It's already going in. So we're just gonna loosely tighten down. And uh, I can barely get to the other one, but hey, we get lucky. Screws are going in, magnet is in place. And I'm just for, okay, no over torquing, no stripping the heads or else you will never get it apart again. Okay, just gentle tightening. Yeah, that's good. I'm gonna get a leaf blade real quick. I just wanna see that they are really sticking to this magnet. Not that I have reverse polarity of the magnet and it's pushing it away. Let's see. Some of you guys are probably laughing and screaming at the screen right now because you probably think, oh yeah, magnets, they attract metal on both ends. Only magnet to magnet can push each other away. Yeah, so this is fine here. It's holding the blade in place. So that's good. I just wanted to verify, okay. I'm not a magnetologist. Magnetologist, is that a word? No, probably not. So this is already all back together, right? Now we need to reassemble this here. So, uh, remember the two little holes that our little uh, uh, paper clip came through? Here is the, the nut with the two slots that goes towards the holes and then we have to wiggle this little spring in place. This should be relatively easy as, as long as you get it pushed on there. It should snap in place. It's already in. There you go. All right, so you have the mm -hmm. slots towards the hole. I wonder if we might put a little bit of some oil on this nut because when corrosion sets in, stuff might seize together. I don't know if this is a good idea because we also don't want it to come loose, right? But I'm still gonna do it anyways because I already noticed there is a little bit of some corrosion here and we don't want this to corrode. And then we're also gonna put a little bit of some oil on 
this left hand thread here just so that it can work itself you know what why don't we just grab the little bottle because that could use a little little more so we're just going to put a drop on there right here we go that's good enough all right and now remember lefty tidy so yeah um reverse order would be you had your razor opened all the way when you undid the the nut and now we have to have it closed all the way when you tighten it up again Okay, there it goes. There it goes. So in, in the process of tightening the nut, you're opening your razor. So we might have to close it again a little bit. Now the nut is coming out again. Dang it. Because they are opposite threading. Okay, again. It's a bit more complicated than the taking apart here. I get the feeling. Okay, here we got it now. All right. All the way in and snugging it up. You don't want to snap the pins off. And... Um, I don't think it's going to fall apart. So now we have a super clean, non-squeaking leaf twig. So there you go. That was longer than I anticipated. But uh, hey, Atua shared this with me and I figured I need to share that with you guys. Um, you just need a little bit of Loctite and a little bit of some oil in a you know half an hour to take it apart clean it properly and put it back together and you have a almost let me zoom in on this beauty almost new looking twig that also slides and moves freely now i guess you could probably drop a couple uh, drops of oil in there Maybe put some oil here in this gap where parts are rubbing on each other and maybe put a drop down the top uh, with the same result. But at least it's really clean now. Look at that. Nice. Okay, guys, that's not really it. We're not going to extend this any further. Um, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.